last video we talked about my supercharged Silverado. I gave you kind of a quick overview of the specs on it, uh, wheels, accessories, and more importantly, the uh, motor modifications. So, if you have questions, you know, uh, comment on that video and I'll, I'll answer as many as I can. If, uh, but uh, today I actually wanted to move on to my next vehicle. Uh, well, another vehicle that I've had, it was a uh, another supercharged uh, GM truck. It was actually a 2014 uh, Silverado, no, sorry, 2014 Sierra, GMC Sierra. So it was a new uh, body style for that year. I actually drove to Louisiana to pick it up because it was a, um, at the time there weren't anything in my area and priced accordingly. But uh, this one was a, it's called the Black Widow. I'm sure by now you, everyone's heard of uh, Black Widows. They're, they're uh, a conversion truck built by Southern Comfort Automotive. And uh, <clears throat> so what they do with a conversion truck for them on a Black Widow is they do fender flares, they do like a hood scoop, they add graphics on it, uh, they do a, usually a normally a six inch lift. They throw a 35 inch tall tires on it. They'll do like a, more, more than likely they'll do like a, like a 20 by nine uh, wide wheel with like a negative 12 offset, you know, just enough to be even with the, with the flares. Um, nowadays, that was back in 14. So nowadays they actually do do the, uh, they do like 22 by 12s from that same company now and make it look a whole lot more aggressive. But uh, back in 14, they did more of the 20 by nines and not, as, not quite as aggressive. Anyways, it was a six inch lift, the wheels, tires, fender flares, uh, stitching the, the Black Widow on the headrest. Uh, the whole speedometer gauge was like a cluster with like custom for that truck. Um, things inside were painted certain colors. Uh, Exhaust, of course. Uh, bah, 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 bah. What else? Oh, uh, little things like they you know, might have had like a LED, like a bull bar, or uh, LED in the bull bar as well. Or when you open the door, it, it, sometimes they had like the I don't remember if my head or not, but it was like a LED light, map light that kind of lit the lit the floor as you were walk out, like a courtesy light. Um, so, but the biggest thing about that truck, obviously me being an engine guy, liking speed and all that, um, it was a Edelbrock, that was actually, yeah, that was the other Edelbrock supercharger I had on that truck. So the conversion kit on that specific truck also included a Edelbrock supercharger. And of course it was more, that one actually, I later found out that that was a prototype supercharger for that truck. So that was like the very first supercharger they threw uh, from uh, Edelbrock and made it work on that truck. Um, I found out because my uh, intake tube uh, it was uh, plastic and it cracked. So some, somewhere along the way when I owned it, it actually cracked. So I got a hold of like Edel, uh, Edelbrock. Yeah, it was Edelbrock I called, not, not Southern Comfort. So I called Edelbrock, I was like, hey man, what's up, what's going on? Um, uh, with this, is there a warranty, such and such? And they looked into the, the serial number, they looked into the build. They said, yeah, that was actually a prototype. That was the first one. Um, so they said that, that they actually changed it from plastic to um, stainless steel. So they sent me a whole new one, and that was a stainless steel painted black, and uh, replaced it. But uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and they sent me once I called them, they actually sent me like a certificate saying one of one or whatever. Uh, so it was kind of cool. Uh, I didn't get that when I bought the truck. But anyways, I went down to Louisiana. I uh, I bought the truck. I traded in another truck, well, I'll talk about another day. I traded in a 2012 Roush supercharged uh, Raptor. That one was 590 at the crank, is what they call it on the package. Uh, I think it was a stage two. But uh, we'll talk that, about that another day. If you want to talk more about that, let me know. Also, before I forget, like I always do, hit that like and subscribe button so that uh, you can stay in touch with more, stay tuned for more videos like this. and. Like I said, I'll eventually do detailed videos. I just, uh, I'm so excited about doing uh, videos on my uh, on my cars and all the jacked up stuff I've had. But um, so I drove down to Louisiana to pick up that truck, and it was a fun, you know, fun experience. I drove down there. It was nice to see the work, you know, part of the states that I hadn't been to. Um, experience was good. It was, uh, man, I'm trying, I'm trying. I think it was Bosch. No, it wasn't. I can't remember the name of the dealership, so sorry about that. But they were a Southern Comfort automotive dealer as well, so they would get, they would get, they would uh, um, send trucks to Southern Comfort, stock trucks. They would build them, they'd send them back. 
and they'd be ready to sell. So I was actually trying to find one that was already uh, supercharged. Oops. I was actually trying to find one that was already supercharged from, not from the factory, but from the dealer. Um, so I could get the warranty. Not that it really matters because I guess I would have had to have driven to, to uh, Louisiana to get the dealer to warranty anything. But um, supposedly any, any GM dealership would help me out. They would pay the, the dealership and if it needed any work done or Southern Comfort would take care of me, such and such. But uh, so I went down there, bought it. Started driving back. It came with like Black Widow signature 20 by nine wheels. I, at the time, was like, man, that's lame. You know, I'm paying, I think it was 70 grand. It was an SLT package truck. So one step down from the Denali. And uh, it's like, that's lame, you know? And I actually was looking online, trying to find a shop that did custom wheels and tires or aftermarket wheels and tires along the route, back, along the, my route back home. And I ended up finding a shop uh, called uh, Arc Wheel and Tire over in Arkansas. And a uh, really cool shop. I mean, they got like a half audio, half wheel and tire shop. And they've only gotten bigger with time. I still follow them on Facebook and Instagram. But really cool shop. They do a lot of custom builds there, a lot of cool builds, big tires, big wheels, uh, big lifts, uh, a lot of cool stuff. Um, so follow them if you want to check them out. But uh, what do I stop through? I was like, hey, what's up, man? Can you guys help me out? I got these wheels that are, you know, they're cool, but they're just not cool for me. And uh, they're not my thing. And, you know, I, I looked at what they had in stock. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. And I asked them if they want to do like trade, you know, give me some credit for my wheels. I don't remember what they gave me because I kept my tires. My tires were nice. They were like Mickey Thompson's 35s and they were like 12 inches wide. So I, I did the tires. It's just the wheels. So <clears throat> yeah, they gave, I don't remember if it was like four or 500 bucks they gave me for the wheels. If that, maybe, I don't know. But um, the new ones were like Moto Metals. And uh, I'll actually post a few videos. I got videos of like a coal startup. I got videos of, uh, a picture of when I bought it, how it looked. Um, I got videos of a couple races I did with that truck. Um, so I'll talk more about the build too, because there's more, there's more to talk about. Um, so anyway, I went to Art Bill and Tire, they hooked me up with the wheels. Um, as I left, they thought it was really cool, the truck was really cool, they hadn't seen one. Um, as I left, I, little, I did a little, uh, like a, a heart, heavy acceleration, it spun the tires, and they took a little picture video of it, and they posted it on their, on their Facebook page, that was pretty cool. Um, so I went, I was all, after that, you know, I, I loved the way it looked, I went home, uh, drove, drove the rest of the trip back, and it didn't take but maybe a couple months before I was like, man, I need some more power, you know? Uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a great truck, though. That one actually never broke down, never had any issues. At some point, there was a fuel, fuel issue because I, I added more horsepower to it. You know me, <laughs> added more power, never enough. So I added more power to it, and it was short on fuel, and it was going in limp mode. So I added a... Uh, at the time, all I could find was, I think they said it was like a fuel pump out of a ZR1 or ZL1 or something like that. And they, uh, that was more of like a plug and play type thing. So they, they ended up doing that. And, and then after that, it was fine. But um, so I called the late model throttle over in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And uh, they're pretty legit over there. They've actually did a few trucks for me, a few builds. But uh, that particular one, I went in there for like a smaller pulley, a boost gauge, and a tune. And then uh, I actually think I did catless headers right away. And then I went back for, I was like, oh man, I gotta have more. I think, uh, okay, so initially, what did I do? Was that the one? Yeah, initially I went to Lingen Filter in uh, Indiana and they tuned it because when I got the Edelbrock Supercharger, it was Lingen Filter that tuned it. I had a, a certificate. And uh, so they tuned it there. It was like only like 380 at the wheels, which was kind of a bummer because that's like, that's nothing, you know? And uh, so they tuned it. I came out with like 420 or 430. And I was like, all right, whatever, you know, it's an upgrade. Shifting was better. I could barely do a burnout before. I could, I do like a burnout, and then it, it like slowed down so much out of second gear that it just, I didn't want to go. It, I'd almost, it almost shift back into first and start again over. So I do like a little mini burnout, even though my foot was pinned. You do like a little burnout, and then like reset, go back into first, and then do another burnout. So it's kind of stupid. So I went to Indiana, uh, Lincoln Felder, they, they uh, tuned it for me, got me more power. I don't remember if I did a small pulley at them or not. But anyways, later down the road, like on Waukesha, they model Grotto, they hooked me up with the, with the tune, the headers, and uh, got me a little more power. And then I went back for, what did I go back for? A cam. I did a mild cam in that, kind of like in my other 6.2 Silverado that we talked about, the 2012. So I did a cam in that. I did a uh, E85 tune. Of course, I had the catalyst headers, full exhaust, smaller pulley at the end of it. Um, and then I did the fuel pump. 
did the fuel pump, and even though it might not be a lot to you guys, um, I actually did four, 508 at the wheels, 508 wheel horsepower on the dyno. And you gotta remember, I'm doing 30, I'm spending 35 inch tall tires, and this is a 5.3 liter, this, this thing is 6'2. So 5.3 liter out of the six speed transmission, uh, turning 35 inch tall tires. So cam to E85, smaller pulley, more blue, supercharged, headers, I was doing 508. That's the most I saw on that thing. Um, if, if, if it was on stock tires, I'm sure it would have been more like 580, 570, which, you know, that sounds about right for as much as I did to it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's up with that one. <laughs> Actually, we did all the mods to it, and on the dyno it was fine. And then I got back home, and I drove around, and I tried racing this EcoBoost, and it whooped me because I went in a limp, limp mode. And I was like, what the shit? <laughs> so I called them up, I said, hey, we got a problem. They, they hooked me up with that fuel pump. I raced that uh, truck again, whooped them. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll post a few videos. So there's a video of uh, a cold start with the cam, which sounds pretty good. It's a mild one, but it still sounds really good. Um, there's a video of me racing a, so my dad's got a 2014 High Country Silverado, uh, 6.2 liter and it's Edelbrock super, Supercharged. My dad holds on to his vehicles, not like me. I, I get rid of them. I switch, I swap the vehicles like once a year, maybe more than that. Um, but at the time I had that Sierra and he had that 14 Silverado and uh, we lined him up and he had, this is, so he had an Edelbrock two rod still from when he bought the supercharger. It wasn't anything custom yet. And uh, we ended up, it was like pretty close. I was kind of, I got him first. And it kind of seemed like he was kind of just starting to catch up, and then his speed limiter kicked in. So then, because he, he can't, he could do over 100 miles an hour with that with that tune. Uh, the way they sent it from the from the Edelbrock when they when they first sent it out, they can't uh, delete that stuff to keep the warranty. And uh, so I technically won that race because of that. I don't know how much of it it would have took. I don't know if it would have caught up in time. To, I don't know. So we got to 100 miles an hour, and that's when we just started to catch up a little bit, and then boom. <laughs> All of a sudden, the video just shows. Whoo! And I just keep going. <laughs> but uh, so there's those two videos. Oh, there's a couple fun videos. I throughout the lifespan of that truck, I ended up swapping the wheels to like 22 by 12s. I did some hostile hostile wheels during the winter time. I plastic dipped them white because I didn't want them to get uh, pitted, and I just went with white to try something different. But everyone does black. Uh, so there's a few videos of me playing around in the snow. Some of you guys might laugh because I kind of look. It looks like I got stuck a few times in some pretty pretty small uh, amounts of snow, maybe like six inches or something like that of snow, I was simply getting stuck. Uh, but whatever, it was still fun, you could still hit the night. <laughs> you could, that exhaust was roaring, man. And like I said, I was catalyst headers, full exhaust, it was loud. Um, I don't know, I'll see what other videos I got, but, oh, I, did, I, got, I got a couple videos of a couple burnouts, a little after I bought it. Uh, I think at that point it was like tuned from Lingenfelter, but it still wasn't like super modded. Um, so yeah, I'll post some videos, you guys check it out. Um, Interior-wise, like I said, I mentioned before what the, what the Black Widow kit had in it. I did end up doing, like, I think in that one is a, I think that's the one I did, two 10-inch JL Audio uh, Dub 7 subs underneath the rear seat. So I didn't uh, take away from anyone sitting back there. The seat had a lift kit specially uh, made for that truck. And then we threw just enough big enough box to clear it, and we did side ports. So the ports were going out the, through the sides of the rear doors and um, I mean they weren't going through the doors but they were facing towards the doors and uh, that was a pretty loud setup man I mean if I were to ever switch the setup I got now on my truck I might end up going back to something like that but um, hit the lows perfect nice beefy tens um, but yeah I think that's most of what I got for that truck um, I will post some videos and I will touch base after I after you watch them. If you have any questions, uh, please comment. Don't hesitate to ask anything. Uh, bear with me. I'm still getting used to all this YouTube stuff, uh, editing such and such. I'm still not that great, uh, but you know, it's what it's what you get. So, any suggestions? I'm happy to happy to take any suggestions, advice, opinions you guys might have. Um, yeah, man, just enjoy the videos. All right, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe.